videos we have introduced the determinants of demand, the law of demand, the determinants of supply, and the law of supply, and we have learned that demand is a downward sloping and we have learned that demand is a downward sloping curve showing the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded, and supply is an upward sloping curve showing the direct relationship between a good's price and the quantity supplied. The purpose of this lesson is to talk about what happens when demand and supply meet in a market and a price and quantity are established by the market. Let's start with the definition of equilibrium. In physical science, you might think of equilibrium as a state of balance. In microeconomics, equilibrium occurs when the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. Another way to understand equilibrium in a market is that the market has cleared. Sometimes we call the equilibrium price for a particular good the market clearing price. The market clearing price refers to the price at which the market is in equilibrium. There are neither shortages nor surpluses in the market at the market clearing price. Let's move over to our graph to look at an example of a market clearing price in the market for beef. We know that demand is a downward sloping curve illustrating the quantities of beef that consumers are willing and able to buy at a range of prices in a particular period of time. The downward sloping demand curve reflects the fact that consumers derive less additional benefit from each unit of beef that they consume. Therefore, another word for demand is the marginal benefit of consumers of beef. Supply in the market for beef is, is illustrated by an upward sloping curve showing the quantities of beef that producers are willing and able to bring to market at a range of prices in a period of time. We also explained in a previous video that supply represents the marginal costs to the producers of a good. Since resources become scarcer as output of a good increases, the marginal cost increases, therefore producers are only willing to supply more of a good as the price rises. Looking at the supply and demand for beef in this market, it's pretty easy to see where the equilibrium price and quantity are. Equilibrium price is the price at which the quantity demanded and the quantity supply are equal. In other words, where supply and demand meet. We're going to call that PE for price equilibrium. The quantity lies directly below this intersection, and we'll call that QE for equilibrium quantity. At any price other than PE, we would have a disequilibrium in the market. So looking down at the next part of our notes here, we can seek to understand what happens if the price is too high in a market. At a price higher than PE in this graph, let's see what would happen that would lead to a disequilibrium. If we put a price of P1 on our graph, this is greater than PE, the law of demand says that the quantity of beef demanded would decrease due to the fact that at higher prices consumers are willing and able to buy a smaller quantity of beef. On the other hand, the price increase would lead producers of beef to wish to supply a greater quantity since the cost of producing additional units can now be covered by the higher price. What we end up with at a price of P1 is what we call a disequilibrium in which the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. Another word for this situation is a surplus. There is a surplus or an excess supply of beef in the market at any price higher than PE. So going back to our notes, we can say that at a price higher than the equilibrium, there will be a surplus of output. In other words, the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded. Let's talk quickly about what makes a price of P1 inefficient from an economic perspective. At P1, QS beef will be supplied, which consumers place a, a value of only P0 on. P0 represents the marginal benefits consumers derive from the quantity of beef being produced at QS. However, the cost of producing QS units of beef is higher than the benefit that consumers derive. The, the cost is represented by P1. In other words, at QS, we have what we call an inefficient allocation of resources because the marginal cost to the producers of beef exceeds the marginal benefit that consumers of beef derive from consuming QS units of beef. When the marginal cost of production exceeds the marginal benefit of consumption, we say that the market is allocatively inefficient. 
Only when the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied can the market be said to be efficient because the benefits derived from the consumption of the good are equal to the costs incurred in the production of the good. Let's move on and talk about what might happen if the price of beef is lower than the equilibrium price. If the price of beef falls below the equilibrium of PE, we'll end up with another situation where the market is now in a disequilibrium. The law of demand says that as the price of a good decreases, the quantity consumers are willing and able to buy increases. As we can see here, the decrease in price from PE to P1 will cause quantity demanded to increase to QD. On the other hand, producers of beef will find it harder to cover the higher marginal costs of producing the original quantity. Therefore, they will rationally reduce their output to QS, resulting in a situation we know as a shortage. A shortage occurs when the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied for a good. So when the price of a good is too low, there will be a shortage in which the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied. Such an outcome is inefficient because resources are not allocated efficiently. Anytime consumers wish to buy more of the good than is actually being produced, we have an inefficient market and the price is too low. To illustrate what makes this inefficient, we can show how at QS, which is the quantity actually being produced, the marginal cost to producers is represented by P1, but the benefit that consumers derived from the QS unit of beef produced is much higher than the cost incurred in its production. Marginal benefit exceeds marginal cost in this case, implying that the market is allocatively inefficient. Not enough output is being produced to QS. The market would be more efficient if the price were to rise, causing the quantity supplied to increase and the quantity supplied to decrease until they are once again equal at the equilibrium price and quantity. So let's now define what is meant by allocative efficiency. We've given a couple of examples of situations in which allocative efficiency is not achieved. If the quantity supplied is greater than the equilibrium, or if the quantity supplied is less than the equilibrium, then we have allocative inefficiency. Allocative efficiency occurs when the marginal benefits of consumers are equal to the marginal costs of production. Economic analysis is often rooted in costs and benefits. If quantity produced is less than the socially optimal quantity, as in the situation down here, marginal benefit will be greater than marginal cost at that quantity, and society would be better off with more of the good produced. The problem that could lead to this is a price that is too low. On the other hand, if output is occurring at a quantity greater than the equilibrium quantity, the marginal cost to the producers of the good exceeds the marginal benefits that consumers derive from the production of the good, and society would be better off with less of the good produced. In this situation, it is likely that the price of the good is too high. So equilibrium in a market occurs when the price is at the level at which quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. And the market is considered allocatively efficient at this price and quantity combination. Neither too much nor too little is being produced. However, if the quantity produced is greater than equilibrium, we have a situation in which the costs of production exceed the benefits that consumers are deriving on the margin. Therefore, we'd be better off with less of the good produced. If the quantity is less than the socially optimal quantity or less than equilibrium, we might be in a situation where there is a shortage of the good and there is more benefit derived from the last unit produced than the cost of producing it. Society would be better off with more of the good. The concepts of allocative efficiency, equilibrium, and disequilibrium will play an important role in our understanding of how markets work in future videos and future lessons in the course. The purpose of this video, however, was simply to introduce the concept of market equilibrium as the market clearing price and quantity at which neither shortages nor surpluses occur and the market is producing at an allocatively efficient level of output.